shoot this recovery, something interesting is happening. I'm not 100% sure what, whether it's the tank, the scale, or something. But we're definitely flowing here. We've got 63, we're doing a push pull. I'll take you through the configuration in a minute. But you know, right now I'm running in the A position on the acceleration off, which I find weird because you know we're pulling vapor and it says that B is supposed to be a faster vapor. But when I go to B, we have a lower discharge output and our, uh, our, our suction side comes up. When I switch back to A, and it, this would tell me that we have a higher volume flowing through. I'm not sure. And I am in push-pull. One thing I haven't tried is switching over to a fast. But if I understand correctly, it's basically the same thing in this situation. Like I don't think it's going to be that different and it's not causing any significant change in the scale. So I'm going to leave it in a push-pull because technically I get a little bit higher differential when I'm set to push-pull. But I'm not, I drew lines, so one of the things I can use as a metric is, okay, so is the scale a question? When a push-pull is going like this, you can look at your tank uh, condensate points to see if you're increasing scale. Now, my heavy condensate line, which I would say is my actual liquid level, is down here. And then I have a secondary line, which is, you know, a few inches above that liquid level, where we've got a light condensation and then a heavier condensation. So I drew a line at those two points probably about 10, 15 minutes ago, and we have not increased beyond that. Now I can close this valve and I immediately start pulling down on my suction side. Right, I'm down to the negatives there. And then I can close my liquid valve and my liquid valve is cold, which would indicate to me that we're flowing through there some kind of liquid. Uh, but I don't understand why we are, uh, why we're not still pulling more into the tank. But I can close this valve and I will start to decrease on the suction input. And we've just got a ball valve down here flowing and this whole line is cold, which again, all that indicates to me that we should have some kind of flow. Something I'm curious about that shouldn't be possible is if this vapor has some kind of pickup tube, is it somehow going down there? But you know, if that was the case, I should, if I was getting liquid into here, I should see that by how my hoses react. But I, I don't know. So something I am going to test real quick. Let's go ahead, we're going to set this on the ground. And we're going to move this into the closed position. And then let's stop. And I'm going to close this vapor. And what I want to see is do I have vapor here at the vapor? Or is there liquid? If there's liquid, then there's something with this tank. Hey, yeah, see? That was straight. That's straight vapor. Okay. Well, that's a good thing. But it still doesn't explain. Let me go ahead and purge the whole hose again. It still doesn't explain why I'm not seeing my, my levels like significantly increase in the tank. Fine. That valve's in an open 
position, which is where it sits. Why would we not be pushing the foot down? Looks like we've got standing liquid in the condenser. And I'm pretty sure we've got standing liquid in the evaporator. Yeah. We've got liquid in there, but we're just cycling vapor right now. Let's see if we're right. If we're right, I'll explain it to you. If I'm wrong, then I'm not going to waste my breath. No, not yet. Alright, you should have flow to you. Crack, crack the hose. Give it a minute. All right. Open it up. All right. Let's go ahead, let's close our uh, condenser back off. I'm gonna come down here, shut this. open back up. We got the temporary chiller in the parking lot still running. But I think we've got enough to so close. And then we're closed. So let's go ahead and set this on the ground. Auto restart. So I probably need to adjust our set point. But right now we're gonna turn back on at 50. So, to restart six, uh, let's go four, enter, 48, auto. System run, leaving control. Yep. Recycling up. So what I'm expecting, these side glasses are going to fill with liquid. And I'll explain everything that I'm testing in here in a minute. I'm just trying to confirm how right or wrong I am before I go on a whole spill about what I think is happening. This is interesting. Uh, our PRV should be fully closed, which it the arms in the closed position. Come back to compressor. Yeah, and we have the vane motor switches closed, so we know that's good. Hey, hold it. Yeah. You got an oil leak right here.
How long has that been leaking? It's coming out from this seal up around here. Look, yeah. all the way around. Can we just tighten these up? I have no. star bits on the truck. Mm. No? Man, I hope we didn't lose that truck. You're right, there is oil. Everywhere. This is all oil. It wasn't like this. Oh man. Oh man. It was not like this last time I was here. Oh no.
sucking it down pretty good. Something interesting I noticed, and I'm going to ask Navic about this. You know, if reading the manual and all the documentation on this, when you get to a vapor stage, when you have it in the B position, it's supposed to be faster in B somehow. But for some reason, A is moving faster than B. So I'm going to ask him about that so I can have a better understanding. Because just the way I read their documentation, it's not making sense to me. So I'm going to reach out to Andrew Greaves, see what he has to say. I'll follow back up in either this video or in a video, kind of explaining that a little deeper in their official response. So I promise you how we were going to do the push pull setup. I'm going to hold to that. What we did, we come out of the drain port and we fed into one of our tanks. All right. So when we came into that tank, it was actually this one over here. We fed into the liquid port here with a 3 8 and then out the vapor port we came out with another 3 8 into the vapor of the or into the inlet port of the uh, recovery machine. And then out of this port we fed a quarter inch out and we came into the quarter inch on this upside port uh, which is pushing vapor back into it. So what should have happened is we're pushing all of our vapor back into the system and because we're pulling the vapor off of this tank, we actually keep the tank pressure slightly below the chiller's pressure. So what that does is that naturally draws the vapor or the liquid, that naturally draws the liquid that should have been there into this tank's liquid port and we can fill this tank up with liquid and, and just keep the vapor pulled off the top of it. Once we hit our, our weight that we were looking for, then we would just stop and switch over and we'd put another tank in. Uh, and that would have been the recovery process until we got down to our, our just just our vapor, which should have been several tanks deep, but that's, that's not what happened. Now, there is an alternative way to do this, uh, and the way that I usually practice is instead of having the, the discharge port go out, uh, I end up having the discharge port route to another tank like this. So I would still run my liquid through a tank, I'd pull the liquid through it, or I'd pull the vapor off of the tank, and then I would push the vapor into another tank and that would be like a direct recovery instead of a push-pull recovery. Given how, how our results were on the uh, air cool job we did and how well the push-pull did in terms of time, I was hoping we could really showcase how well that was going to work here. Obviously, it's not going to be what happens, but that's okay. Something else uh, I'll point out. I don't recommend having to run like all of these. These are 125 tanks. We did this because we couldn't get the tanks we needed. Normally, I like to run either the 200 pounds or the 220s, however you want to look at those. Uh, so technically, it was the 240s. So I usually like to run uh, all, all of those uh, all the way through, or I'll get like a thousand pound drum and then I'll get a couple of two, 240s uh, to you know fill up a little bit of extra we had. Remember, we have 1,500 pounds we needed to do. In this particular case, nobody had thousands anywhere near the area, and we've got all the only 240s we could find, and we could only get uh, just a handful. And honestly, we cleared stock on the 120s that we have. So, we were fortunate to have even enough capacity, but technically we had enough to hold, I think, like 15 or 1600 pounds. It would have been just enough with a full charge. Now we don't need any of them. Uh, and what we'll end up doing is we'll end up taking the ones that are rentals and we'll take those back and turn them back in so that we don't we can get that rental charge off of us because we don't have a need for them now. Well, there's enough going on in this one. We're going to just turn this into kind of a multi-part series. So, hope you enjoyed day one. In other words, recovery. We're going to dive into repairs. I have no idea how many videos this is going to turn into. But instead of it being like a two, three hour long video that takes me a month to edit, we're going to break this out into parts. Anyway, appreciate it guys. MTT, let's get the repairs done.